Wow, what a beautiful day. What is going on guys? Welcome back to the Hawaii series. Me ancient and I are getting ready to go out snorkeling. Check out his channel in the description, by the way. He's gonna look for octopus and lobster and just any cool thing we might wanna gather and eat out there. And then I'm gonna hand line fish. All it is, you take a spool and put a sinker on there with a little hook and drop some bait down while you're snorkeling. So I'm gonna give that a go. We're just gonna have fun out here and see what happens. We don't snorkel this place very often, so it was fun to kind of explore a newer area. Uh, a lot of boulders around here and a lot of rock up close to shore. And then the regular reef out there. And my dad found this when we got out over the reef. It was the first find of the day. It's an eel head on a hook. This is a popular bait used by locals for ulua. You see a three-way silver there. An eel head. Apparently the big ulua just love them. So, we kept that with us. That was a cool find. Never found anything like that before. And then I found a sinker. I'm not sure if it was from the rig or not, but a nice little sinker there. And then saw something strange on the reef. And it's a sea cucumber. And I'm thinking about maybe eating one of these. What do you guys think? A little sea cucumber <laughs> catch and cook. I don't know. I, think I don't know if you eat the blubber or there's meat on them or what, but that might be an interesting uh, little experiment there. And then I see an octopus on the reef there. Changes color instantly, sees me, sees that I see him. And uh, me ancient comes in to get him out of there. Little poke of the spear. You don't even have to pierce the skin. You just, they don't like being poked with metal. And uh, came out, look at all of the ink from this guy. Good grief. It's almost like the smaller they are, the more ink that comes out or something. It's just relentless clouds of ink, even above the water. See them squirting it around everywhere. Cool little creature. So we decided to keep him. Put him in the dive bag. A lot of you guys have been asking about the dive bag. And uh, if you literally just search dive bag, they will come up. They're available. They're like 20 bucks or whatever on any uh, kind of dive website. I use it for fresh water and salt water. It's great for crawdads and everything else. And I pulled out... My little fishing line here, and nothing like a little hand line fishing while you're snorkeling. I've actually done this ever since I was little. Um, had a Ziploc bag of a few octopus chunks that I pre-cut and uh, put a little piece on a hook. And in theory, you can lower it down there and you kind of choose what fish you want to catch. Uh, but the reality is you, you really don't have any choice in what fish you, you're gonna catch because some fish on the reef are so much more aggressive than others. So I hook up right here and pull it in. Look, it's a wrasse, and there's another wrasse following it. That's called a Christmas uh, wrasse, believe it or not. And the one I have hooked is called a saddleback, and uh, it was following there. I don't know if it was uh, wanting to steal the bait or if it was like the mate of that one, and it was freaking out. I'm not really sure which one, but little saddleback wrasse, their first catch of the day. They are the most aggressive ones on the reef. Beautiful, beautiful little fish. Um, let it go, though. It was a little on the small side. They don't get very big. So I decided to let him go and wait for something a little better. But I hooked up on another one. They are super aggressive. Them and goatfish and hawkfish are like the three most aggressive uh, fish on the reef in my experience. Fun little catches. But you guys can see how fun um, handline fishing is while you're snorkeling. And then I get my dad's attention here because I saw something on the bottom and don't ask me how i saw it from this far up but you can see right there all of a sudden it changes color an octopus so i pointed out to my dad and i wasn't sure look at the eyes i wasn't sure how big it was it was i thought it might be a giant actually but when you're that far up this is quite deep water this is below the ledge there um everything looks bigger underwater so my dad got around in position Gave it a little poke. He kind of resisted coming out a little bit, but uh, just a little shake of the spear. And the octopus came out. And it turns out, I'm thinking it's like a big old keeper. And this dude <laughs> wasn't even close. Nah, he was probably close, but definitely not a giant. So he flipped out of my dad's hand. We didn't make any effort to recover him. I think he was undersized. That'd be one pound in Hawaii to keep. But it's always fun catching him. Beautiful sea turtle. Turtles cruising everywhere. I always feel safer with turtles around because I feel like the sharks would go after them instead of us. So I rigged up again. 
with another little piece of octopus and lowered it down there and this time I get a nice little goat fish something good to eat and this was a keeper goat fish had to be over eight inches in Hawaii to keep or at least this kind does this is called a many bar goat fish happy with that catch pulled out my little bag put them in the bag there Super fun activity, guys. If you're ever out snorkeling, snorkeling starting to get a little boring for you. Try just bringing a little spool of line. And in Hawaii at the moment, you don't even need a fishing license. And you can catch a few reef fish. It's, it's pretty easy. Uh, there are a couple drawbacks to it, which I'll get to in a second. You, you see all the fish down there gathered around the bait. So like I say, you, you think you can like pick the nice fish. But usually the smaller ones always get it for the big ones. I hooked up again right here. And it was another keeper goatfish many bar goatfish they're like they're like 10 different kinds of goatfish in Hawaii I think this is one of the prettiest ones so my dad helped me with that but anyway keep that in mind if you guys are snorkeling in Hawaii like millions of people snorkel in Hawaii every year and uh, if you're pretty adept underwater this can be a super fun activity but the one drawback is your line does get tangled so after those four catches my line kind of got tangled beyond uh, beyond repair there. I guess you could, could bring a little piece, like a little scissors or something um, underwater with you and like re-rig, but always harder underwater to do that kind of stuff. Um, and like I say, once you're good at snorkeling, I would go after it. But if you're a newbie snorkeler, I wouldn't recommend it because like you're kind of doing two difficult activities at the same time, snorkeling and fishing. But, um, but if you're comfortable underwater, definitely go for it. Check out all these sinkers we started to find on the outer rocks. These are great finds. Like with the price of lead right now, it's between a dollar and fifty and two dollars per sinker, like at Bass Pro Shops. We looked above the water and you can see like a kind of a little cliff there. I'm sure the locals fish off that cliff. It's very convenient. And they cast at the outer reef, but if they don't reel in fast enough, the sinkers get caught on these rocks. And that's why we found so many in such a short amount of time. Then I found somebody's room key. <laughs> I could let myself in somewhere. Another nice pyramid sinker, just sinker after sinker everywhere. There are two right beside each other here. One there, nice little egg sinker there. Then I found a golf ball. There's a nearby golf course, uh, actually a real famous golf course. A lot of celebrities golf there, uh, like Rush Limbaugh and, and just all kinds of celebrities called Kapalua Golf Course. And then this is the coolest find of the day. This big jerk bait snagged perfectly between the rocks there. This is like a $15 jerk bait. And look at the condition that it's in. Like, besides from having to sharpen the hooks a little, like, and it's not all rusted out or anything, I was super pleased with that. I'm definitely going to try to catch a fish on that uh, in another video. A pair of sunglasses, not good anymore, but just treasure everywhere. It's so much fun to go along and find all this stuff. Um, check out the trumpet fish. Not sure what they were doing there. Playing around. You just never know what you're going to see when you come out. These are called ornate butterfly fish. Very beautiful, and that, that shot didn't do him justice. Here's a real old sinker, kind of crusted over. And then my dad got excited because he saw something real cool, and he uh, brought me over to the sand. And for like 30 seconds, I didn't know what I was looking at. I was like, what, what are you pointing out? Can you guys see it? It's right there. It's a flounder, a big peacock flounder. And we both agreed this is one of the biggest ones we'd ever seen. You can't really see the proportions in the shot there, but it's about like between 18 and 20 inches long. Definitely one of the biggest, if not the biggest, peacock flounder we'd ever found. I think these are one of the coolest fish of the reef, too. That is amazing how they glide along. They have little blue rings all over them. So check this out. Then my dad found a fish snagged on a line. So somebody got snagged on a little coral head and the hook and the bait must have been, still been drifting around and this hawkfish came over and swallowed it. So he was snagged. And we don't know how long he'd been down there. Who knows? I, mean, I don't know how long a fish would survive on a line like that. We didn't end up spearing him. My dad just grabbed the line 
pulled it off the coral. We also recovered the sinker as well, so we had a good hook and sinker out of the deal. And we got a fish. <laughs> we didn't even have to cast a line. That's a good size for a hawkfish. They don't, they don't get super terribly big. They're very tasty to eat. So we had a nice mess of fish and an octopus. We were super pleased with the day. Glided back home and uh, yeah, it was, it was fantastic. Love doing this. You never know where you're gonna find every time you go out. All right, my friends, an amazing little snorkel session out there. Less than two hours, and we found all of this stuff here. That was the one of the weirdest That's finds. That's the first thing I found. Yeah, the eel head on a hook. Fishermen are probably using a mora eel as bait. I was super happy to find this. We might even like use this to troll on the boat trip oh, yeah, that we have coming absolutely. up. Have that troll behind the boat. That would be cool to catch a fish on a lure that we yeah. found. Golf balls. I mean, tons of sinkers. The price of lead. That's just a lot of money or stuff. My dad found this really cool bracelet. Yeah, kind of handmade, you can see the lines still Yeah. there. You can use the beads for uh, beads for fishing. <laughs> Sunglasses, Sunglasses, they're not very good anymore. I like the shells that you found though, those are cool. We'll let Sweet. ourselves into, into a loop somewhere. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and then the fish and the yeah. octopus. We're gonna get to cleaning these, but a great, great morning out there. Yeah, that was fantastic. <laughs> I'm gonna put the guts in this uh, bag here. Crikey. May have to move up a little higher. Wonder how long he was snagged. Yeah, he just swallowed the bait. I'm gonna cut the line right here. That was some thick line. Somebody was going for something big down there. Thank you, sir. That was a cool find. All right, guys, just kill this guy real quick. Super easy, right between the eyes of an octopus. There's a uh, there's a nerve there, a main nerve. Just cut, and then I like because they're so easy to clean. You just go bam, pull out the guts. Gosh, even in death, he sticks to everything. That's crazy. Probably about a ten inch goat fish. There we go, last piece. Nice. All right, my friends, now we're gonna do something that Hawaiians do to the octopus to tenderize it. They, uh, they simply take it and they beat it against a rock. Loosen up that muscle fiber. There you go, wow. There you go. And guys, for our special recipe today, we are deep frying octopus for the first time, let's see how it tastes. Check this out, guys. Nice little table here, and I actually chose this one, not only because it has a beautiful view on the, of the ocean, but we have a bench on this side to sit at, but on this side, there's nothing. So I can just stand right here and uh, cook everything up. The Ace Videos backpack has all the cooking stuff in it. This thing holds a lot. <laughs> Huge shout out to my dad for helping me with this video. Guys, check out his channel. I'll link it in the description. He, uh, he's an octopus catcher extraordinaire. So thank you to him for this. I got the octopus right here. Gonna cut him up. I've got seasonings. I've even got spam since we're in Hawaii. Spam is like the, just the, the, the meat of Hawaii. Some fish fry, oil, everything I need to start cooking up here. And then I've got a package sent by some subscribers. This is Papa's Pepper. Mm, what do we got? Papa's Pepper. What is the, all this? Um, is an extreme, that's what it's called, extremely hot seasoning. Oh, this is the one. This is Dragon's Dust. This stuff is absolutely smoking. I'm very excited to try this. What is they have Papa's pepper, a gourmet blend of seven hot peppers that create a pillowy powder to amplify the flavor and heat of anything you eat. That is sweet. Thank you so much for them just sending me this. We will add a little bit to the octopus today. I'm gonna take, look at that, this, this uh, tentacle is just a nubbin. I wonder if you got a fight, if a fish or an eel stole it off. I think what I'm gonna do is cut this up into nice little chunks like that. Yeah, we'll just deep fry these chunks. 
I don't really know of anybody like just making octopus nuggets like this. Maybe it like shrivels up or something. I, I don't really know what's gonna happen. And that is all I'm gonna do for now, folks. Just a couple of tentacles for the experiment. And then we'll have a piece of hawkfish. <laughs> you can see the color difference between the goatfish and the hawkfish. It's super white. The hawkfish and the goatfish is like nice pink color to it. New Orleans fish. Whoa. You have to be careful because the wind doesn't blow it all away. Just kind of ooze it out there. A little salt on it. Now we're going to use some of my first cast seasoning. Let's see how it tastes on the octopus. And we'll get to the Papa's pepper in a second. We're gonna, that, my dad doesn't like stuff that's super spicy, so we'll get to that in a second. Mm. Now it's time to add the octopus chunks here. Octopus nuggets. Who ever heard of such a thing? And you know, I'm going to take a long string tentacle. It'll probably all ball up. So, yeah. The batter sticks to them real easy, that's for sure. Oh, that looks hot. Folks, I wanted to wait till the oil was really hot enough because I'm just gonna flash fry these. Like, we're not gonna wait for too long at all. Because I want them, uh, I hopefully, I, I'm thinking that if you cook an octopus too long, it's gonna be really, really rubbery, especially in oil. I'm thinking, I mean, I might be totally wrong. Maybe the longer you cook them. That's just, I'm just having fun, just experimenting this video. I just thought of this. I'm actually going to take them out at intervals. So I'm going to take a couple pieces out right now. Like So at the one minute interval, roughly one minute, I'll take a couple pieces out. And then actually while we're waiting, I'm going to take this dragon's dust and add just a, a shape like that. That's all I need. Look at that little, little bit right in there. That is enough to make it quite spicy. That stuff is just, it's extreme. Like you gotta be careful with it. It'll, it'll get in your eyes and you will have a bad, bad, bad day. A bit of octopus is ready to come out. And this will be like the two, two and a half minute interval. And then we'll leave these last pieces in there and let them cook for just a couple minutes more. These will be the spicy octopus nuggets. <laughs> Get the fish ready. Pops, I am ready if you want to try some deep fried octopus for the first time. You're hungry? Let me drop a couple pieces of goat fish in there. And a hawk fish. Diggity dog is right. That was such a great snorkeling session. That wow. was one of the more memorable ones. Mm -hmm. So we'll okay. see if like there's any change in the sure. rubberiness to them. Let me stir these real quick. All right, I'd say we sample these so we know yes, how to sir. cook the rest from now. We, you want to pray real quick? Sure. Thank you so much, Father, and for the safety in the water, the success in the water, and now the bounty we get to enjoy. Thank you for providing it for us richly. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. I'd say we start with the one minute stuff. This is the one minute? Mm-hmm. Seem to cook really well in that minute. The thinner stuff, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got the little tenant, so that's really mm -hmm. good. Oh, that's See, good. mine's still chewy, but it might be more raw in the middle. Mm -hmm. The taste is good, though. Mm -hmm. Deep fried out. Absolutely. No one tried the two to three minute stuff. Cheers. I like the thicker. You like the thicker? The flavor? Yeah, mm-hmm. Wow. Why is that? Why do you like the thicker thing? It, I don't know if it had more of the coating on it. Or it got in, it feels like, it tastes like it got inside the whole thing all the way through. Maybe it's the thicker and the longer cooking. That is tasty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, uh, where the suction cups are, mm -hmm. that's chewing up real nicely. It's the meat in a thicker piece that just takes a little more to chew. Now, three to four minutes here. Right. I'm going to grab this little tiny I'm piece. Look at that. Oh, it's Deep got fried. some good tentacles on mm -hmm. it. <laughs> yeah, good little tentacles. Mm -hmm. Octopus nuggets make octopus filet. Very flavorful. Yeah. I can't get over that. Man, that's good. One cool thing about octopus, it, it really absorbs like whatever flavor you're putting on. Mm -hmm. That is very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. That's just my first cast seasoning, guys. Link in the description. The best seasoning in the whole world. It really, I just love it. All right, and then we have here some of my mom's homemade potato salad. This is from Mimi's Kitchen. Yeah, <laughs> Mimi's oh, Kitchen. Man. Maybe a new YouTube channel I should come in. No, you never know. I never know. I'll just put a bunch out there and you and I can both eat out the same thing. That plate. sounds what great. So I think we're both agreed that this is the best flavored octopus we've oh, ever had. Absolutely. Deep fried. And, yeah. And I have, I have to tell you that there is a rubberiness to it, but it's nothing like when we do it when we've done it the other way. So this yeah, is, boiled this is it way better. Yeah, way better. Mm. Cold potato salad. Oh. Mm. Deep fried octopus. Mm. It doesn't get any better. Just a seafood feast out here. There we go. 
Uh, little goat fish, little hot fish in the Papa's pepper. Let's see if we can stand the heat. All right. Now, which is which? Um, Hawkfish, the white, whitish one, and the mm -hmm. yeah, darker one is goat fish. By the way, it's potato salad, 10 out of 10. Oh, absolutely. Mm. Cheers. Cheers. The taste is good, but I have to say the meat is kind of mealy, like a peat perch, like a it sea is. perch. Mm -hmm. Goat fish is okay. It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. It just absorbs whatever you put in. Yeah, yeah, it's just kind of not like super tasteful. Now the hawk fish. Hot fish or goat fish, which is better? I think the hot fish is better because it's a little, not much, but it's a little flakier. At least mm -hmm. the piece I just had. Mm -hmm. I like it. it. Yeah. yeah. That's good. And the Papa's pepper, guys. I didn't put too much. It's a nice little spice, but phenomenal stuff. All right, should we try the very well yeah. cooked, um, well done piece of octopus? It still feels warm. Nice. Uh, that's the way to do octopus. I'm telling you, that, I, I, I think we're done trying to figure out how to cook octopus. How to cook? Just... Um, and that's a lot, that's the best time. Mm. Just the right? long time? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is, that's the, that broke down the most. So the longer you fry in oil, the more it breaks down. Mm. Wow. Wow. Deep fried octopus. Boom. A winner. All those fish, delicious. A seafood feast. On this gorgeous ocean here. It doesn't get any better than this. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Hope y'all enjoyed. Don't forget to check out the Angel's channel in the description. We'll see you in the next one.